This is an educational video on managing rivers. There are two main ways in which we can manage rivers and reduce the effects of flooding. These two ways are mainly come under hard, en hard engineering and soft engineering. Hard engineering mainly involves changing the course of the river, making it less likely to flood. However, soft engineering isn't, is allowing the flood to happen, but just reducing its effect. One example of hard engineering which we can use to control rivers is building dams. And what these are are huge walls that block off the path of the river and form lakes. And these are good because they provide us with a good supply of water. One of the main problems with building dams, however, is that they are very expensive and can sometimes cause small villages to be flooded if they are in the way of the dam or the lake that's created by it. Furthermore, they prevent, they prevent farmers, which would normally use the water for farming, from getting as much water as they need to produce a good crop yield. Another example of hard engineering is channel straightening. And what this is, is making the channel straighter, and removing meanders, which makes the river flow faster and causing it less likely to flood. This is good because, of course, it reduces floods. However, the main problem is that there will be more erosion and flooding is possible downstream. One example of soft engineering is flood warning. And what these are are warnings for floods that are released by the Environment Agency on the television, radio and the internet. And these are good because they allow people time to prepare and, they, and people living in an area where they are at risk of floods are actually aware of the dangers that they possess allowing them to buy things such as sandbags and reduce the damage to their houses. However, the main problems with this is that they don't actually stop the floods, which means that, and also there's no guarantee that they'll get the message, so the damage can still be high. Another example of soft engineering is preparation, which include, includes urging people living in dangers of risk of floods to make changes to their houses to reduce the damage and buy things such as survival kits to allow them to survive in the event of a flood. And this is good because it means the buildings are more likely to survive and the people, the people are better prepared in the event of a flood. However, it's bad because they are, give people a false sense of security. A third example of soft engineering is floodplain zoning, which involves the Environment Agency preventing houses from being built on areas at risk of floods, such as floodplains. And this is good because it means that the damage is, the damage is reduced and it reduces risks to people's safety, possibly even saving lives. Uh, and of course money. But this is bad because it could be too late for some areas where houses have already been built in areas that are at risk of flooding. Fourth and final example of soft engineering is the do nothing method, which, as the name suggests, isn't actually doing anything. And it's good because, as we know, flooding is a natural course of nature. But it's bad because it doesn't really do anything to stop flooding and can still cause damage to many people's homes.